Welcome back to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug, and thanks for joining me for another Pen Resurrection Sunday. Today's cadaver on the slab is this circa 1960 Schaefer PFM, or Pen for Men, snorkel touchdown filler. The pen was provided to me for restoration by John Summers. Thanks, John. If you've been to the Inquiring Minds lab before, you'll see a format change. I'm going to take you through the restoration of this pen from the first triage of the pen to see just how dead it is and how much work it might take to get this writing again to the final analysis of how well the resurrection went, if at all. I have no idea how successful this will be. I'm just going to talk my way through it. So be prepared for about a half an hour's worth of me droning on and on about what I'm doing to get this pen working. I'll spend a little time talking about some of the history of this pen, if things don't go too far off the rails, and we have some time left. But first, I have an update from a pen I restored last week, this 1943 Parker 51 Vacuumatic. The video just went up this morning, and I've already got some feedback from viewers about the nib. I was concerned this nib wasn't 14 karat gold because it wasn't marked with either a date or 14K. But Con M. Ilias, an administrator of the Facebook group Vintage Fountain Pen Collectors, Users, and Restorers in Pakistan, there's a moniker for you, he wrote, It's an unmarked 14 karat gold legit. Parker 51 nib. You often find such unmarked nibs on P51s from the early years, 1941 to 43. So as a matter of fact, any gold color Parker 51 nib is 14 karat gold, even if it's not marked so. So that's good to know. Thank you, Khan, for that information. I thought that that might have been a replacement nib from much later, so it's nice to have it confirmed that it is, in fact, 14 karat gold. And now before we assess how actually dead this Schaefer PFM is. I wanted to show you a new segment I'm calling New Tools. For the new rules, everybody, new rules. New Tools, everybody. First up, this new knockout block. Inquiring Minds fan Bill didn't like my makeshift knockout block and felt I should be using the proper tools. I said I was too poor to afford the Pendragon's knockout block, so Bill sent me money on PayPal to finance this purchase, and I've marked it as such, Bill's Block. While I was at the Pendragon's Etsy shop, I purchased this nib burnisher as well. This, along with my acrylic nib shaping block, will help me straighten out some particularly gnarly nibs, like this one on a friend's Parker Challenger. Let me get up closer to that. You can see how gnarly that is. So I'll give those tools a try with that restoration. And a viewer also gave me a little tip to put silicone O-rings around some of these, these knockout rods to keep them from falling all the way through. And I've done that with my pellet pusher from the Pendragons and my pellet pusher uh, version two from the Inky Nib. That's a good one, that one. So now they don't fall all the way through my block. And if you watched last week's resurrection of this 1943 Parker 51, you'll know that while I was trying to heat the pen to get the vac pump out and the hood off, my ancient heat gun died on me. So I went to Amazon and got another. This is a sleeker one, easier to handle than the one I had before, the really, really old one I had. And it has two heat settings on it and a cool to the touch cowl on the front end, which is really nice. This is very focused heat, so I'm going to have to get used to how much heat this produces. Ooh, and there's one more tool that I recently received. Uh, I got this from the Inky Nib. That's Scott over at the Inky Nib, where I get my silicone grease and where I purchased my vac extractor tool that I use on Parker Vacuumatics and Parker 51 Vacuumatics. But uh, Scott sent me this and uh, in this little case here, and it is a shellac pen. And there it is, the shellac pen. Interesting concept. You have a basically a piston brush pen uh, full of shellac, and you take this top off here, and then you turn this knob, and it turns the piston and pushes the shellac down into the brush. So I'm going to give this a try on this repair uh, because I'm going to have to use uh, shellac 
on the new sack for the Schaefer PFM. And the next items are not tools per se, but supplies. When I first looked at the Schaefer PFM, I tried to fill it with water to see if the sack and the seals were still intact. The pen drew up very little, if any, water. So I immediately ordered a Schaefer PFM repair kit from Anderson Pens. The kit includes a point holder gasket, an O-ring, and an ink sack, and is $7.50 US. But the shipping to me was $20 US. Now this little plastic envelope weighs 2.5 grams and is three inches by four and three quarter inches in size, and it costs 20 freaking dollars to ship it to Canada? For me to ship this back to them would cost me eight bucks Canadian. Give me a freaking break, Anderson. So I did what they expect me to do when they charge me extortion fees for shipping. I added more stuff to my order. I needed a pressure bar for that Parker Challenger, so I added that. And the Parker 51 from last week needed the vac pump and the hood sealed. So I added this little jar of pure talc and this little jar of rosin. They call it section sealant. I was going to add other tiny things, but once I got past 36 grams for the order, 36 grams, the price of the shipping went up to $22 US. So if and when Anderson Pens stops discriminating against Canadians, I'll shop there again, but not until then. So now that I'm tooled and supplied up, let's triage this PFM. Schaefer introduced the PFM in 1959 and made them until 1968. There were nine model variations from the PFM 1 through 7, the masterpiece, and the autograph. The PFM 1 and 2 had silver nibs, whereas the rest had 14 karat gold nibs. The variations were in the cap and clip styles and materials, and the colors and blind cap tassies. This one is a PFM 4, as it has a 14 karat gold nib, gold filled clip, and tassie and the cap is polished stainless steel. Although the Schaefer PFM is now a highly sought after classic, it was not well received in the early 60s. The slimmer version of the PFM was called the Imperial and were touchdown fillers like this one. They were discontinued in the 70s, but were reintroduced in the 1990s as a cartridge converter and called the Legacy. There have been several versions of the Legacy, from the Legacy 1 and 2 to the Legacy Heritage, which which is still made today. The main feature in common with all of these models has been the Imperial inlaid Schaefer nib. I have another one of these gorgeous nibs on my Schaefer Imperial, which is a slimmer version of the PFM and is a touchdown filler as well. And I have a third version of this nib in the Schaefer Targa. The Targa was made in a huge variety of finishes from 1982 through 1998 and is a highly collectible fountain pen. This Schaefer Targa is from the late 70s in a brown Ronce lac finish. And you can see the difference in the girth between the PFM, the Imperial, and the Targa. They go from fairly fat to very thin. So let's triage this pen. The clip seems to be in good shape, just needs some polishing up. The same thing with the barrel. Has some scratches on it from over 60 years of wear. At the top of the cap band it says Schaefer's made in the USA, and then there's the gold band there. The barrel has no real severe gouges in it, lots of wear, so we can polish that up. And of course the, the round barrel tapers into a, rec, a rounded rectangle at the bottom with the gold filled tassie, which has some oxidation on it, and it looks like it's a bit green as well, so we'll have to polish that up. The nib looks to be in good shape, very shiny, not any deep scratches. Same thing with the section. It has that typical ring around it from the cap mechanism and the snorkel and the feed look to be in good shape. You turn the blind cap and it extends the snorkel and then you can pull out the touch down sleeve. I don't know how much water there's going to be in this, but we push it down. No, I dried it out pretty well. So when you press it down, you should hear a, a hissing sound. And there's a little bit of that, but not very much. When you push this sleeve down, it compresses the sack on the inside. And then at this point, it releases that pressure through that little hole right there. And you hear a little spurt of air. 
and that should reinflate the sack. So either the seal's gone or the sack's gone, but we'll have to get into this pen to find out. But the mechanism works very nicely. So I'm going to have to heat that section off because it won't just come off by itself to get at the sack and the sack protector. And I'm going to have to get to the inside of this touchdown sleeve to unscrew this blind cap to get at the seal at the end of that barrel and replace that. There's one more thing in the kit, and that's this, this point gasket right here. And that goes on the inside and guides that snorkel tube through the feed. So we have to get to the inside of that section. So the next thing I'm going to do is heat that section to try to get that section off of there. And then we'll inspect the inside. There. And that's all the heat it took. A lot of threads. There we go. So there's the spring on the inside. So I'll probably polish that up a little bit too. Put that in the bath and clean it up because it looks a little bit rusty, but it still works nicely. Sometimes that spring might need to be replaced and you can get replacement springs as well. There's a slot screw at the bottom of that barrel that holds that blind cap on. And here is the sack protector and Boy, that came out easy. So there's a sack inside there, latex sack. And let's poke it to see. Yeah, that's why it's not working because that sack is petrified inside there. So the snorkel looks very good, but it really came out easily. And that means to me that that seal is probably gone on the inside there. Let's see what the new one looks like. So there's the O-ring. And I've lost these little guys before, so the first thing I do is put these... Well, I can't put that in there, but I'll put the spring in here as well. Put these parts in a little plastic container so I don't lose them. But there's that uh, gasket that goes on that snorkel sleeve. Like that. And belongs on the inside, right there. Now let's take a look at our nib unit. Uh, this threaded part here threads back into the section as well. And you can get that out, but you have to heat that too. And there's a, a metal washer right there that you have to get out because this gasket is behind that. And that's what the snorkel tube goes through. And it feels really loose right there, it should actually be tight. I put this one on, yeah, and that's tight. We've got an ossified sack inside the sack protector, and we've got a, a worn point gasket in the front of that section. So there's a couple things I have to do here. Um, I need to unscrew that screw to get that blind cap off, and then we can get at the seal that's there, and I have to get this part off of that section. So I'm going to put this in a little bit of warm water to heat it for a little bit uh, to see whether I can get that adhesive inside there to budge to pull that off. And while I've got the nib soaking in some hot water, I put a slot screwdriver inside the touchdown sleeve and I'm going to turn on the blind cap. <sighs> And release that screw. I think that's released. Yep, there's the, the screw. I'm going to clean that up a bit. We never want to lose that because I don't think you can replace that screw. There, we should be able to slip that off. There's the blind cap. And now we can push that sleeve back through the front and it comes out. There's a little seal. And this is the original one right here because it's white. And we're going to tease that out and replace it with the new one, which is black. And I'll use my dental tool here to just pick that out of there. And get my eyeballs on here. That's better, get my eyeballs on. And now I can see what I'm doing. 
I would wear these eyeballs all day long because I can see really, really close up. But I might be looked upon as a bit of a freak in public. It's pretty ossified. It's not got any elastic properties to it at all. It's like a rubber band that goes bad. It just crumbles into dust. And there it is. You can see that seal. Oh, and that's from 1960. And it's just ossified into pieces. Now I'm going to clean this whole thing out. And we'll just leave the replacement of the new silicone ring in there until we've cleaned the rest of this pen up. Next step, we need to get that point out of there to get at the sack to push it out the front. I've put a dowel inside that section sleeve and makes it easier to heat. Keep checking it, make sure it doesn't get too hot and apply some grip to both and turn. There. Good. So there's the threaded section on the section section and we'll get out our dental tool again and we'll tease that washer out of there. Maybe I'll tease the whole thing out of there. There's the washer and you don't want to lose that. I don't know that there are replacements for that. And there's the point gasket. Lift it out. There we go. Actually doesn't look in bad shape. Looks are deceiving. That hole from going in and out and in and out over uh, 60 years uh, gets loose. And that's what she said. That's what she said. We find the new one and we can put that in there. Now I'm just going to check on the clutch as well. The clutch ring should come out. There it is. And that's kind of gummy as well. So I'm going to put all this stuff in the electrosonic bath. Uh, which is nine parts distilled water and one part ammonia for a bit. Make sure I throw those old pieces away and we'll clean all that up. Now while those parts are in the bath, I'm going to try to extract the snorkel to be able to clean out that old desiccated sack that's inside the sack protector. Uh, and I've noticed that this was crimped on these four corners uh, which means that it has been resacked in the past. Someone's crimped it on each one of those four corners. So I used one of my dental tools to gently push that crimp out. And then I'm using a, a small rod to go up through that hole and try to push from below to pop that snorkel out. I've already got it to start to budge a little bit. There it comes took a little bit of pressure to get it to move and I don't want to destroy the underside so I'm sort of poking it gently all the way around the outside because you don't want to wreck that little piece right there and that's the tip of that snorkel and that's very delicate very fragile you can see how that tip has a, a feed system on the inside of that small hypodermic needle and then it comes down into a the back part of that snorkel has a little bit of a feed piece on it as well. So when I was pushing it with this rod, I was trying to hit the outside rather than the center to make it move. Now that needs to be cleaned up and we can go at the inside of this with a scraper, another dental scraper, and scrape out the remnants of that sack. See, it's all sort of ossified in there. So I'll work on that. That's going to take a little bit of time to get that cleaned out. Now, I'm not ever recommending putting this drill bit into a drill and doing this, but find the right diameter drill bit and you can tease out the remnants of that sack by hand just very slowly. You have to be careful because that's very, very thin aluminum. I put that sack protector and desiccated sack in the uh, ultrasonic bath. And I'm going at this collar here with my dental tool and my toothbrush to get all of that old cement off of there. Clutch ring has come out of the bath well. 
and has the washer. And we can also, now that those items are out of there, we can push the feed out as well. It should go down through like that. There it is. And there's the feed. And so we can clean that up. It looks in pretty good shape. And we can give it a little bit of a polish. That's ebonite. And we can polish the nib as well. And while I've got it off like this, I might even polish up that section. Get that plastic nice and shiny. So there are component parts of the section with our new point gasket. Through lots of poking and prodding, I got most of that sack out. There's uh, still quite a bit in there. So I'm, so I'm soaking the sack protector in some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. That might dissolve some of the remaining sack. I'm going to scrape off some of this remaining sack on this snorkel end. Make sure that edge is nice and clean. Now we're going to see how we can polish up that gold a little bit. Just use a jewelry polishing cloth that I got from Amazon here. It has regular felt on the outside and then the polishing material on the inside. See, it's pretty good to begin with, but let's see how much we can polish it up. These Schaefer nibs have a bit of a ski jump on them. And so, because they deflect up a little bit like that, I'm going to polish it against my finger so I don't catch that nib. You can see how lovely it is. Okay, now I'm going to replace that seal on the back of the barrel. And for that, we need some silicone grease. We need the seal itself. And we're going to grease up that ring and try to tease it back into the barrel. Catching a greased pig here. And see if I can do this on camera. And before I install it, I'm going to check its dimensions. It is 10 millimeters on the outside and it is 1.2 millimeters thick. And I use the tip of the toothpick. Get it up into that groove. There we go. Get it started. Ah, you stay there. It's like bicycle repair. Almost there. There we go. And I'm going to get a little bit more grease and just wipe it around the inside there. Just make sure it's covered. I'm going to clean off the head of that screw before I install that blind cap. Polished up the head of that screw a little bit better to so get all that rust and corrosion off it. And we slide that to the inside of the touchdown sleeve until it comes through the other end like that. And then we slide the barrel on and we screw the cap down. Just hand tight. We don't want to split that plastic. And then we can put a little bit of silicone grease on that touchdown sleeve. The other thing we want to make sure about on this barrel is that that hole there is clear. I already checked it. You can see metal through it. So it's nice and clear. That's where the air escapes. Let's see if we can get some of that corrosion off of that end tassie. And it comes up nicely with just a little bit of elbow grease. Very nice. Look at that. Get all those edges because it's flatted. Looking very good. And now we come down to the um, reinstalling of a sack inside that sack protector. Uh, I worked for a couple of hours last night getting the remnants of that sack out of that sack protector. And I soaked it in IPA, 99% isopropyl alcohol, because that's supposed to be bad for latex. So if it was bad for latex, it might melt it a little bit. And it actually did. I soaked it for a couple of hours. Then I was able to tease out the rest of that sack. Actually made it a little bit more pliant, whereas before I was chipping away at it uh, after soaking in IPA it uh, came loose pretty nicely. Here's our sack. We're going to put it inside the sack protector and we're going to figure out where the end of that sack should come and measure where it needs to be. So that is where we're going to pinch the sack and we're going to snip it off right at that point. There we go. Now we'll give it a test fit here. Shouldn't really need a sack spreader 
for this. They're roughly the same size. So that should go in all the way when I pushed it down tight. It looks like that works. Okay, now let's put the sack on. So we're going to spread a little bit of shellac with our pen just on the outside of that collar, just like that, so that there's no blockage on the inside. You don't want to put any shellac on the end there at all. And let's see if we can slide this on. It went on very nicely. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a twist and I'm just going to add a little bit as a sealant, just around there like that. Now we'll let that dry. Okay, now that our shellac is dried, I'm gonna add a little bit of pure talc. Just gonna add some talc to that latex sack so that it slides nicely and doesn't stick to the inside. And we slide it in. And you can see where the crimp marks were before. I'm gonna line those up so that they're in relatively the same spots as the previous person put that down and crimped it. And we're gonna make that flush. And then I'm just going to crimp it again, just lightly on those four sides with my pliers. Just like that's very, very thin aluminum material. So we're just gonna squeeze that so that it's nice and tight. You have a toy body. Yes, yes you are tight like a tiger. Now we can start assembling our pen, and our spring, and our clutch ring. And we have the new point gasket, and we have the clean and polished ebonite feed, and that metal washer. So the first thing we need to do is line up the feed inside the polished nib section. And we just need to push that through, and it should line up automatically with that nib. And it does. And what we have to do with this point gasket is put it inside there and then cover it with this washer, this middle washer. But we need to grease that up first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a toothpick in that hole and roll the outside edge of that gasket in some silicone grease. And we just smooth it out a little bit. And now we can put that inside there. We don't want to get any of that grease on the on the front faces or back faces of that. And we can put that in to the section and then we're gonna drop the washer on top of that. So that whole perimeter is now sealed with silicone. Then we can put our clutch ring in place and it only goes in one way, which is good. And now I've cleaned up those threads as much as possible on that connector. And to seal this, instead of putting shellac on this, to make it easier to get off in future, make sure that goes in okay, I'm going to add some rosin to it. Uh, rosin has a lower melting temperature than shellac, and so this rosin uh, should be easier to heat that section piece off in the future if we want to get into that nib again. And I'm just going to paint a little bit of rosin Oh, it's dried out again. There we go. There's a little bit more of the liquid. And before it dries, we're going to add a little bit to these threads. Again, just on the outside. Very, very sticky stuff. And then introduce it to the threads. And we get it tightened down before it hardens. There we go, just hand tight. And now we have to line up the snorkel with that hole and we have to line it up so that it's correct. It only goes in one way where that snorkel lines up correctly and then we can press it into place. Then there's a spring that goes on top of that and then we can screw the barrel down on top of that. And there we go, when we turn our blind cap the snorkel retracts. There we go. Now I've polished this with some polishing compound, but there's still a few little marks here and there. I don't really want to go at this with any micro mesh because those gouges are 
They're not gouges. They're little scratches. They're just not severe enough to have to polish the whole barrel down with micro mesh. I'm going to use my Anderson Pens polishing compound number five and polish up that barrel some more. Um, I already polished up the cap. I used metal polish on the chrome and it's come up very nicely. And I've used my polishing cloth on the gold bits. And as you can see, it's come up very, very nice indeed. I'm gonna let it sit for a while uh, before I ink it up. We'll check the ink capacity, whether it holds ink, and we'll check how that nib writes. So I'm just gonna measure the weight here before we fill it. We hit tear, and then we fill the pen with ink. Extend the snorkel and the touchdown tube. All we have to do is put that snorkel in the ink, not the nib itself. See bubbles? And we wait for the sack to inflate. Now all you have to do is crank that snorkel back into the pen and you have no ink to clean up. Now let's check the weight and see how much ink we got. Not very much, about the same as a converter. It says it's 0.5 milliliters of ink. They aren't huge capacity. You saw how thin that sack was. So I showed you how to fill that pen without touching the nib into the ink. But of course, then you have to wait for the ink to flow down through the feed system and to the tip, just like uh, adding a cartridge. So I dipped the nib just to get it a little bit of ink to be able to test the nib. So this is the Schaefer. PFM and it's circa 1960 to 1963, somewhere in there. This feels like a fine nib, 14 karat gold. It writes better when it's posted. That's much better balanced. There we go. Let's check the wetness here. It's very nice and wet. Any variation? Yeah, there's some variation there. Very nice. And it's very smooth with some typical Schaefer feedback. And I'll be back with some thoughts on this restoration. So I decided that there's a little bit more feedback than I like on this nib. It's very well aligned. It is writing perfectly, but I wanna polish out that nib a little bit. So I'm gonna start with some 8,000 grit and just do a number of figure eights. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Circle, circle up, down, right, left, just like that, and then go up to the 12,000 grit and do the same thing. Circle, circle, right, left, up, down, and in all directions, and a little bit on the back, and see whether that's any better. Yeah, that's much better. There, now that's done. I have to say that I was slightly trepidatious about this resurrection. These Schaefer PFMs may have been poorly received by the marketplace in 1960, but 64 years later, they are highly sought after by the fountain pen collecting community. I know I've been looking for one for several years, and thanks to John, I have one in my hands today, and it works. The Schaefer Snorkel is arguably the most complicated filling system ever devised. There are so many moving parts and seals and springs and gaskets, and parts that need special treatment or special tools to disassemble, that a restoration can be quite daunting. But the pen was dead, and now it's alive again, ready to write for another 60 years. Thanks go out to John Summers for providing this pen for restoration. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as instant access to my videos once I post them. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.